Okay, all right, we're rolling. So, hello again, my name is Justin Kearns uh, with the Winchester Frederick County Tourism Office, and uh, we have been doing all these 360 degree videos, uh, just kind of going around seeing things that you can't see because you're stuck in your house right now, so we figured we would bring some cool things to you. So, uh, right now we are at the Breda Family Vineyard and Winery, Winery and Vineyard. Okay, and uh, we are gonna have a nice, wonderful walk around tour and kind of learn some cool things today. So. With me here today giving us the tour is Loretta Brede. And then I have Amy Brede. Amy Brede. Yeah. Okay, and a uh, couple of generations here, I guess, yeah. that are okay. that are kind of tiered. We've got some little ones running around. So if you see some little ones, uh, that's kind of the world we're all in right now. So yeah. um, you probably have some little ones poking at you right now while you're trying to watch this. So uh, we're going to start. So um, we're kind of starting on the back end of the, the winery, and then we're going to kind of move on the second clip. We're going to move a little bit further over there. But we are in the back where the majority of the grapes are, and we're going to kind of walk around and learn about what you guys do and, and this time of year, what you're doing this time of year, um, and uh, kind of just learn some cool things. So we're on the outside of this fence. This is an imposing fence. Why is this fence here like this? Well, we have a, a large deer population, and everything loves vine so to protect our vineyard uh, we had to put up an eight foot uh, fence we right. have a corridor for the wildlife that they can go around it but uh, for us here it's to stop them from nibbling on our new shoots all right so we've covered first thing is a physical barrier all right we're gonna, <laughs> physical barrier. everything likes to eat grapes yeah, everything um, so, loves grapes. so i guess we're going to talk about all the barriers that we have in place today. Maybe that'll be the theme. So, um, all right, so this is the first barrier. Here's physical barrier. This keeps the, uh, the, the munchy deer out. So, yeah. all right, well, let's uh, head on okay. in. Deer don't have opposable thumbs, so they cannot open this door. Yeah. Good thing, right? And we go. Oh, now, sure. now, when people come to visit, they can, will, will you do kind of little guided trips back sure. here? Can people That's come back? That's what we do, and, yep. We bring them back and we let them uh, first-hand view of the vineyard here and different stages depending upon what time of year you come. And uh, we love to share the vineyard with our customers and our clients. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful place to be and we love uh, what we do. Now, this, it's mid-April right now, yeah. so um, we just had a, a freeze last night, so that yes. was interesting. Um, yeah. I guess that's always a challenge for, for everyone who grows things. Everyone who grows things has yeah. these challenges. But well, uh, these are hybrids, and so we have them up on the hill, and uh, and they're with a bud swell, so we should should have been okay with these last night. So we're going to take a we're going to jump in uh, and take a closer look at those in a minute. We're going to kind of walk around a okay. little bit here. So this is kind of cool. I've always loved this since you guys opened. You opened about two years ago now. Uh, Has it been two years? Yeah. We've been growers since 2013. Okay, but open to the public two years yeah, ago. Yes. Open to okay. the public two years ago. Um, and I love this when you right when you were first opening, you were kind of walking around saying, "I want to put up these signs that have you know things." I love these signs. I yeah. think these are really cool um, because you're very much into the sustainability and the as much as you possibly can uh, to be able to still grow things. Yes. Um, but to try to do it as naturally as possible. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, nature does it best. Yes, that is true. And let, let nature do it. Yeah, let, let nature, nature do it. Do it. All right, and so, so the more we in, in, are invasive and uh, the more problems that we have, um, we are looking at a soil food web. And just like uh, you watch the Lion King and you see the circle of life, and you have a circle of life that goes below the soil. And, and uh, these different things like protozoan and uh, all these anthropods and nematodes all interact. They feed one another and they deposit uh, nutrients, um, micronutrients into the soil and uh, they do that in such a beautiful way. It's such a balance and uh, if you look into a forest for instance you see the beautiful things and it's all in a, in a balance until we come in and ruin that. So we try to maintain that. It's hard when you overcrop and you put all these vines into one space. Uh, it presents a whole other uh, set of challenges. But as long as we can try to maintain this, we're big into composting. We do damage the soil with some of the sprays. I mean, you have to have them, but then we're back there putting those uh, components back in there. And we'll show you uh, if you want our, our process where we do composting. Sure, absolutely. Okay, um, it's on the right. way back. Awesome. Uh, so next over here, I've always loved this too. I thought this yeah. was really cool um, that you guys do this here. So. Yeah. This in 
a month or two is yeah. going to look really cool. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, yeah. right now it looks like some weeds uh, but and some grass. But this is going to look really beautiful. Uh, probably a lot of things blooming in, in yes. May, June, July. You'll have a lot of really beautiful stuff here. So yeah. when people can come back, yeah. there should be lots of beautiful things here. Uh, so what's going on here? What is this? So this is a beneficial habitat, and we um, have beneficial insects in the... We don't spray herbicides, and so these... Insects uh, have a purpose in our vineyard, and so we we provided a house for them, so to speak, shelter. And by having these flowers here, not only is it pretty, but um, the pollen is something that they can eat. So if there's some problem in the vineyard, these insects will go into the vineyard, and normally they would leave and look for food elsewhere. But because you have this habitat here, they do come back and they do stay. And uh, these are some of the beneficial insects, and to support them, um, this particular one, praying mantis, I mean, he eats everything, but <laughs> the green lacewing, for instance, it, it loves Queen Anne's lace. So we have to provide, uh, in, to, to, to make that equation work, beneficial flowers. And this is what you're going to see. Uh, we have other flowers that uh, are on here beside that, but we do do daisies and the corn flower. We do cosmos. Uh, and the Queen Anne's lace is a favorite for that uh, uh, green lacewing. And she's amazing. We've haven't, haven't we've even done um, um, egg releases with okay. her. Okay. Now, there. what does the what does the lacewing do for the vineyard? Um, the lacewing is uh, 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 it eats um, uh, all kind of. Um, I think it eats the mites. Isn't that? Is it the larvae? Is it the larvae? Okay. She eats. Um, I have to look it up um, again, but um, I forget what she has. Is it was it the larva? I think so, but I'm not. Okay. Um, but they eat some of the bad things. But yeah, the, right. these and you, don't and you want keep to them reproduce. close. Yeah. yeah, you wanted to keep them, keep them out of the vineyard and have them eat them up. Each one they does a adult. different job. One right. will eat the, inject eggs in there into the, the host, and they they live in there. Some will eat mites. Some will uh, go into the soil and eat the larva. Uh, it, it just depends, you know, what you have. Like the nematodes, for instance, for the Japanese beetle, it'll go into the soil. And each one has its little purpose, and uh, um, and you know that's the function of it. That's how it survives, and in doing that, it actually keeps uh, some of the bad bugs out of the vineyard, or the bad right. things you're out of the vineyard. You're creating a homeostasis within yeah. the environment. You're keeping the good bugs to eat the bad bugs, and and they're helping us so we don't have to do damage control. Right. right. So yeah. Kind of the circle of life. But Let each it do one its has its <laughs> each each one has its. Uh, it's a little job that it does. And this is a large, I mean, this is a big chunk oh, yeah, it's of real estate an that you gave yeah. up there. So there yeah. could have been grapes there. but It could have been. But uh, the beneficial habitat, like I said, we have never sprayed, uh, you know, even the Japanese beetles. I mean, they'll, we'll take a hit on them. There's really nothing for those. We do spray some kale and clay uh, to try to deter them. But, um, you know... Uh, they, uh, they're a bit invasive, but, um, and there's no predatory bug for those right. either. <laughs> so, no predatory anyway. Yeah, so you're not always... Maybe some chickens. Yeah, maybe, maybe some chickens. chickens. <laughs> so the chickens are going to take care of the Japanese beetles yeah. for us, And hopefully. that's what you saw working back yeah. there. There yeah, was a, uh, yeah. um, some, some chicken construction put, going yeah. on over there. And, uh, um, and the uh, feces from them are really... Yeah. Nutritious for the vine. So yeah, which I didn't good. know. And the scratching and all that. And they the eat the, the, the bugs. And good the thing bugs. to have around. And we mm -hmm. get eggs. And they get eggs. There you go. You can have eggs. Um, yeah. And before we talk about the vines, we were walking through and I was like, oh, but it looks like you sprayed a bunch of Roundup in here. Yeah. And that's not you. You're not a Roundup nope, kind of person. We so aren't. what, how did this happen that all this stuff died? It so, looks like Roundup. So what we do is we overkill. It's nitrogen. And we do high levels of nitrogen on the on the spray. And that actually goes into the soil. And it's actually good for the plants. So it kills them. But it burns them. them. Yeah, it's it, basically it, it, burning them. And it's just the foliage, right? Roots right. are still there. So we have to do it again. Okay. It doesn't kill them. <laughs> it doesn't kill them, kill them. It <laughs> doesn't kill them. It just burns the leaves, the, the, the top part. And, but then it uh, gets into the soil and helps, the, yeah, helps your vines. Right. There As you opposed Very to cool. having you know, something detrimental. So we're in between two different, um, I guess, fields here. Yeah. So we've got what grape here and what grape here? So they look is, different right now. Yeah, this is Arendelle. And Arendelle, we were the only producers of this grape commercially in 2017. It was developed by Cornell University. If you guys out there want to try uh, a new varietal, boy, this is it. Um, it's really amazing. It's kind of like 
a lot of the Spanish grapes and the fact that it's very smooth and uh, we are almost out. I think we have like a few bottles left of it in the tasting room only because we held it back. But uh, we've got another uh, 100 and uh, probably 50 cases, yeah, something good. coming uh, off of this for the fall. So uh, if you want to try it, um, it is at the time we bought it and we were under a biodynamic program, it was the most disease resistant grape in the world. Um, the problem was we got it and we found out that it wasn't. Um, as disease resistant they thought. It was in all aspects except for black rot and organically and biodynamically we really, uh, uh, that was our Achilles heel and uh, so therefore you know black rot became a big part of that block and uh, if we didn't change we would have lost our vine. Right. In every other aspect we love the grape but boy that black rot is uh, tough. And you had a rough year 2018 if yeah. anybody remembers back 2018 yeah. it was that year. <laughs> it just didn't stop raining. It, didn't. it was hot, and it it was either like ninety five degrees or raining or both, mm -hmm. any day of the week. It, it was yeah. it was it was it was rough, yeah. which is perfect for apparently black rot. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. It loves uh, it loves moisture and it loves this grape. And this grape has almost no defenses against it. I think, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it gets into the fruit and it mummifies your. Um, clusters and one day we went out here in 2018 that year and we had a crop all over I mean it was a beautiful crop we thought and a few days later we came in here and all the grapes were infected wow. I mean it was just like just like that just like night and day it was amazing they had shriveled up and and we lost the entire crop and I said you know if I'm in the business of making wine I can't come out here and have no grapes on my vine. But we're growing now. So, oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. so let's no, look. So good. where are we? So we're April. So we're mid-April right now. Yep. So yep. we're at kind of a cool time yep. right now. Everything's um, yep. coming to life. This is a seven-year-old vine. This is your trunk. And this is your um, cordon. And these are spurs. Uh, ideally, uh, when you look at vines, you want um, to have equal distance, which these aren't. Because um, this indicates your grow, growth. Okay. Um, and you want eight, so two shoots, two, two clusters, so ideally 16. This is called VSP system we implement for this particular grape. Okay. And so you have your cordons and your trunk, and then all these new shoots, you can see these buds, they'll come up and they'll grow up here, and then this is your fruit zone. And okay. because of where the, the new canes come in, okay, they come up, then your fruit zone is right, uh, right close to this. So if you look, and that's how we get this to be such a beautiful picture, when you look down, you'll see all the fruit just hanging. It's because of this type of a system where we train the vine to produce the fruit in this uh, area. Now, these little buds that are coming out, mm -hmm. are, these, are these blooms, or are these just stalks that are going to go up and then blooms Those come out? Those are um, little canes, canes. starting. Okay, sorry, they're, canes. They're, they're buds, okay. but from that bud will come... A, a stalk, a little stalk, a cane, and little flowers. Okay. And then from there, you'll have your little clusters, and exactly. you'll have little little flowers on your clusters. And the next thing you come out here, you'll see little teeny grapes on your thing. It's very, it's very, it's an amazing, beautiful thing to come out here. It's just full of life, and it's quiet, and it's peaceful, and it's beautiful. And to watch the different stages of these vines. So if any time you visit these vineyards and they offer. Um, you to come to the vineyard, it's fun to see the different stages of growth, you know. Everybody loves to come out and see it, you've seen it a thousand times where you have these gorgeous vines and clusters hanging on there, but there's also other developmental parts of stages of these vines that are very uh, exciting and to see and to watch, and so you know the whole process. This is really cool. I've never seen a vineyard at this at this stage before. Yeah, yeah. So. doesn't look very uh, appealing right now. I mean, it's attractive, but... That's exactly uh, what we're doing is just, uh, um, you know, this is a dormant kind of stage and it's coming from its dormant stage into life and uh, we just support that in every way we can. Now these guys are different over here. Yeah, so this is Cayuga. Uh, it is also a hybrid grape. Um, we, in 2018, we had a, a virus in the vineyard, uh, and we had to destroy everything. That was a rough year for you. <laughs> oh, it was a tough year. That was in 17, eight, or 17 was it, Amy? Yeah. And uh, so we had to replant the whole thing, and then I think it was, was it 16? 16, 16, I think, 16, I think yeah. it was. And then we had like 
two-year-old vines, and then, uh, and this was planted the identical same time as Arendelle, and uh, then we came out here, and uh, uh, the disease from that year was so bad, again, trying to be organic, in 2017. And our grape crew is like 26 years in the business, and they came out and they looked at these vines, and he said, I don't think they're ever going to make it. And I was like, oh, gosh, you know. Um, we got to either decide to either give up organic farming, and it was so not what I do. I mean, we love, you know, n not dealing with some, yeah. And uh, so we said, okay, if we're in the wine business, we have to grow grapes. And if we have to grow grapes, we have to change what we're doing. And so we did. Um, still uh, sustainable at heart here. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, so... The vineyard crew looked at it and said, I don't think these will ever make it. And so if you look at these block, I don't know if you can see them here. This, uh, there's 750 vines here, and we got 500 uh, 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 pounds off of this. It was such a bad year uh, for us. We didn't, I mean, it, we probably shouldn't even have let them develop. Even that, they were in such bad shape. But we got a little bit off of it. Um, and uh, this crop, uh, this particular grape can pull as much on these vines, probably uh, five, five ton of grapes. Uh, and so we were really on the downside on that. But anyway, wow. the, the, they, these are canes, um, the new canes, the renewal canes that come up. And if you can see, we cut this off at the head here, the trunk. So we had no cordon like you saw earlier, right? So what we had to do is wait last year, which happened to be a phenomenal year, uh, for growing and we had to get all these new canes up and then train the vine and bring back its arms that we amputated basically you see so now you see all these beautiful if you can see you can see all these beautiful little mm -hmm. buds coming in and how pretty they are and these are the pink ones that you know kind of look not like apple blossoms but there are little apple blossoms <laughs> <laughs> and they're very cute and very pretty and and this is what we try to protect in these cold temperatures, you know, right. which is, you see that these are okay. Um, so now we're creating, and why is that so important is because uh, fruit does not develop from uh, old wood. It has to be one-year-old wood. And so these renewal canes, that's why when we have your spurs here and you have your uh, shoots that come off, they are generated from the following year's wood. Um, so... Um, or it's the, a lot of or the previous. Every yeah, year. every year the pruning <laughs> and pruning year. matters. And as you can <laughs> see with this vine, these are brand new shoots. And this is where it's coming. And we will train these. These are trained now. And from these buds, your canes will come up. And when they do, each one of those canes, they'll have uh, fruit on them. So you have and, no fruit from this last year, but you will this year. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, because we have something you can imagine. I cut it to here, right? Right. Last year. So... We had to grow all these new. There was a bunch of them. I wish I had a picture of a unpruned vine. It just looks like a bush, like a forsythia a bush, or <laughs> it's just a bunch of these canes all over the place. So you have to train them, cut off the good and the bad. And there's actually a, a, a procedure the way you do that, and uh, which ones you leave and which ones you don't. And uh, so this is the, the recovery. And again, our vineyard crew came out and they just shook their head and they said, "I can't believe that it, you know you've." these guys made it so we were and I think that speaks to the fact that we really paid attention to our soil huh yeah. Amy and yeah. we fertilized we Repaired. used a lot of compost we really uh, babied them and since we're small we could do that and uh, so we're expecting a really uh, a nice crop off of them this year they won't be as pr productive as probably next year but um, you know it'll certainly be more than what we had last year always growing getting Better. Always growing, always getting, getting better. Just yeah. stop freezing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Especially this time of year. Yeah, right. Stop but as you right. can yeah. see, you know, the vineyard here, our, our, we have a weather station in the vineyard, and it went down to 24 degrees. Wow. Okay, that is some, you cold know, cold. <laughs> and you yeah. can see our buds here are yeah. okay because of the stage they're in, because it's yeah. a late breaking bud, and Which we're up on we a hill. If you look. Varietals. Um, we're up, we're not even as high as you could be, if you see back there, right. and you look down, all the cold air uh, will sink down into that lower valley back there, and that's where your coldest temperatures will be, and this will heat up as well. So um, between the way our, the varietal we chose, between the bud break time, uh, where the location is, how it's set, 
all those things make a really big difference in Virginia okay. if you're going to grow grapes. And hopefully you're okay. And hopefully I'm okay. Hopefully all right. I'm okay. Yeah. So that's this side. So we're going to take a break and we're going to okay. take a walk on over and, and go see a whole bunch of stuff that got planted yesterday. Okay. So the, the, as fresh as you can possibly get. All right.